Hi, so Jason from Effective Dashboards, helping maintenance and reliability professionals get the most out of Power BI. So welcome back to another video. This video is video three of my series on creating reliability and availability metrics and KPIs in Power BI. So in this video, we're going to look at what I've called scenario two. So we covered scenario one in the previous two videos. You can see a link below on them and you can get that scenario there. And that scenario was essentially where we recorded downtime events. Okay, and then we filled in the uptime based on the number of days between the downtime events and how many hours per day the machines would be running. So that's all in um, scenario um, one, the videos for scenario one. In this scenario here, we are going to be looking at the are introducing a standby status. Okay, so not only can a machine be running and can it be um, have a status of unplanned downtime, so unavailable due to unplanned downtime, like a breakdown, or due to planned downtime, it can also be on standby. And this is particularly relevant for a situation where you've got a duty standby setup. So you've got, for example, a power generation system that's got two power generators. One of them runs continuously and the other one is on standby and if one of them fails or is taken down for planned maintenance then the other one will start up and be and be switched on so that we're able to provide continuous power and there's and there's redundancy there okay so the availability of this power generation system is going to be much higher if you've got redundancy there so um yeah that's the one we're going to cover in this video okay so before I kick off, I do want to spend a few times, just a few minutes, just going through and looking at some of the differences between the two scenarios. So the first one, like we mentioned, the data that we had here was just the downtime events, okay, and the start and end of those downtime events. We then filled in the blanks, okay, so between the two events, we just assumed the machine would be running. Um, for this one here, we can't make that assumption, okay? So what we need is to be able to capture the data explicitly for each day, okay? Because if we look at this example here, this machine ran for 50 hours or 50 days, um, then it broke down and then this machine started up. Okay, now while this machine was running, this machine was on standby. So this then uh, took 10 days to fix this machine and then it ran and then it was on standby for 60 days while this machine ran for the next 70 days. Okay, so we can see that we've always got a machine running here. And um, and then this machine was taken down for some preventive maintenance. And then we've got this machine here run for 30 days. And this machine was on standby for 10 days. So we can't assume that between this breakdown event here and this breakdown event here, this machine was running continuously. And because we can't make that assumption, then we can't assume we can't assume that the actual hours that the machine has run is going to be the number of days in between these two events. Okay, so that's a key difference between the the first scenario and the second scenario. We can't make the assumption that just because a machine is um, is available that it's actually going to be running because we've got the standby status. Okay, so for that we need a different type of data. Okay, so we need the data to be in what I've called timesheet style. So we need to have a count of, or for each day we need to account for the machine, like you would when you're filling a timesheet. You need to account for all the hours each day. And there's basically three statuses that the machine can be at. Um, the first one is it can be running. Uh, the second one is it can be um, down, and that can be down for planned maintenance activator or because it's because it's broken down so that's unavailable so downtime and the third is neither up nor down it is really on standby okay so in theory it's available but the machine's not running okay it's a, it's it's sitting and it's available so when we look at the actual run time and if we look at this example here this machine here run for a total of 130 hours and that's going to be the run time we're going to use to calculate our um our, our metrics Okay, so if we look at the data, this is the type of data that we need. Okay, so we can see here, this is um, some of the features of what I've called timesheet style data. So every day we've got an entry in here and each of these entries has got um, a date 
It's got the equipment, equipment description. You just need a really just need an equipment reference there. It's got the run hours, the standby hours, and the available hours. And you can see each time this always needs to add up to 24. So that um, that is what we need. And then for each one of these, we need to um, identify whether it was down for um, the downtime. Um, here, this unavailable time, whether it was planned or unplanned. And then we've got this event number as well. Okay, so that event number needs to be for a continuous event. So this event went on for for two days really here with two days worth of downtime here. Um, or two hours worth of downtime across two days. So four hours worth of downtime. But it was related to the same event, okay? So that is um, that is downtime um, or timesheet style data. All the hours need to be accounted for. So in this example here, it's 24 hours. But I've put a note here. It may be that your working duration for your factory or for the plant is only 12 hours or maybe 16 hours. Whatever that is, you just need to make sure that all of those hours are accounted for in either running, standby or unavailable. Um, what else we've got here? Reason codes and numbers need to be added in. Now, it will probably be a higher overhead in terms of capturing the data. Okay, so it's easier to capture the data by exception. So whenever we've got a breakdown, we just capture the start and end date of that breakdown or that downtime, or whenever we've got unavailability, we capture the start and the end date of that, um, whether it's planned or whether it is um, unplanned. However, this example here, you need to get into the discipline of capturing the data every single day. And it's probably somebody that operates the equipment that's going to do that because they're going to be closest to the equipment. Now, some online um, condition monitoring systems are able to capture when the machine is running and when the machine is stopped, but you will need to code up the stoppages because it's not, generally speaking, I've never come across one that's clever enough to understand if the machine is either down or stopped because we've decided to stop the machine and it's on standby, or we've decided to sh stop the machine to carry out some preventative maintenance, or we've decided to, or the machine stopped because it's broken. Okay, so that's it. That typically needs to be coded up. And um, yeah, so that's that's the, the data that we'll need if you introduce a standby status. So let's go into Power BI and we will start to create some metrics. Okay, so we're in Power BI and I just want to talk through the data model just briefly. So if I go in and look at the data here, we can see I've pulled in the data in this timesheet style. So each one of these is a, an entry for the number of hours of what the machine was doing on that particular day. Um, we can see that on this particular day here, the first of January, it ran for 24 hours. Uh, it ran, kept on running each one of these days here up until the 10th, and it ran for 20.5 hours, was on standby for, or was unavailable for um, 3.5 hours. Okay, now that then becomes event number one. Okay, so all of these entries here where it was unavailable become event number one, and here's the coding here. So we can see that that's the case, and Here's one here for that was in standby for a bit as well. So that's the data there. In terms of the the connections or the or the joins, we've got a, a date table here. So if you've um, never seen a date table before, I'll leave a connection below to explain how how you need one of these and how to set one up. But this is going to be the the table we're going to use to filter this availability data because we want to be able to put a slicer on, onto the. Um, on the report to be able to see if we want to analyze our availability and our reliability figures across a, a, a predefined date range. Um, and that is going to be joined on the date. Okay, so whenever we select the date from the date table, it's going to return the records across that date range. So before we're going to Power BI and actually start to create these measures, I want to go through them on a few slides here so we're, we're really clear on what the, the measures are and the, the, the definitions. Now this slide here is going to show us the difference between the calculations for scenario one where the machine was running all of the time when it, it wasn't down, okay? Versus this one here, which has got the standby configuration and the different types of data. So in, this, in scenario one, the, um, the, the data only captured downtime events. Okay, so in between these downtime events, so there was one on the 11th here that lasted until the 12th, and then there was one on the 17th. So in between these downtime events, we needed to assume that the machine was running, and the number of hours it was running was the number of days times the, the shift length each day. So 
that gave us a, a way of calculating the actual runtime as being the number of days times the shift length minus the downtime days times the shift length, and that would give us the actual running time over the over the period of time. When it comes to this data here, because it's timesheet style data, we can explicitly calculate or we explicitly know when the machine was running and when the machine was unavailable and when it was on standby. So all we need to do here is create a sum of the running hours and that's going to give us our actual running time. In terms of the planned running time, so that is um, what we expected the machine to be running over the period of time. Then the planned running time here was just the number of days times the shift length. So if we've got a month, we expected it to run for a month. Um, this one here, we, um, we've got that standby status. So we can't assume that a machine was running every single day for the month because it may have been in standby at some points during that month. So to calculate the planned running time, we're going to get the sum of the run hours plus we're going to get the sum of the downtime. Okay, so it's going to be all these hours plus all of these hours here and that's going to be what we going to classify as being the planned running time. Okay, so we, we can't, we, we don't include the standby. So in terms of actually getting in and calculating these figures here, let's go through a, a few examples here um, of the mean time between failure, the mean downtime, availability and the technical availability for um, for the scenario 2 type data. So we've got a machine here. Um, are two machines. The first one here, let's go and um, work through some of these calculations. So the actual running time was 50 hours here. And, and these are just units, so it could be days, it could be hours, we'll call it hours for just now. And then um, and then 30 hours and had some uh, time in between for a, an unplanned failure and some standby time. So the actual running time here is 80 hours. Now there's two failures and therefore the mean time between failure is going to be 80 divided by 2 and that's going to be 40 hours. Okay, so we're not taking into account these times here, this um, 110 hours that it was on standby. We're only looking at the, the time that it runs. In terms of the mean downtime, that's the same um, as, as before because we're only looking at the downtime or the unplanned downtime. So it is looking at 20 hours, so for these two events here, divided by 2, because there's two events, and that's 10 hours. So if we then go on and look at the availability, we've got the actual running time. So the actual running time, again, is 80 hours. And then the planned running time is going to be made up of the sum of the run hours plus the sum of the planned downtime plus the sum of the unplanned downtime. Okay, now in this example here, that is going to be 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. It's going to be 100 hours. Okay, that's going to be planned running time. So we're going to have 80 divided by 100, which is going to be 80% here. Okay, 80 divided by the 80 plus 20, which is 80%. In terms of technical availability, well, it's actually the same for this one here because we've got no planned downtime. But if we go and look at the technical availability for machine number two, we can see that we've got a planned running time of um, 150 hours. We've got um, the sum of the unplanned downtime is 10 hours, so that's going to give us 140, and then we're going to divide that by the planned running time, which is the, the run hours plus the downtime hours plus the, so the planned downtime hours plus the unplanned downtime hours, so that's going to give us that um, 150, and then we get 93% there for the technical availability, because we've um, we've taken out this here from the um, the top, the, the the um, numerator. Okay, so hopefully that gets it to clear in your head as to how you were going to calculate these figures here when we get into Power BI and finally start putting some code together. So we're going to start with the mean time between failures and for that we need the actual running time. So let's go and create that and if you remember that actual running time is just going to be the sum of this run hours here. Okay, so we're going to sum the run hours across the availability data for the filter context. Next, we need the number of unplanned downtime events. So what that's going to do is it's going to look at a distinct count. It's going to calculate a distinct count of the event numbers, because if, if you remember, each, down, each day we've got the continuation, a potential continuation of an event. So we just want the distinct count of each of those individual event numbers. Um, filtered for any of these events which are unplanned. They've got an unavailability of using code which is unplanned. So if I just quickly look at the data there, so we can see that would be an event there which is unplanned. 
uh, here's another one, two, three, and ex etc. Okay, so that's that's what we're going to be counting there. So now we've got those two, we can calculate the mean time between failures. Okay, so the mean time between failure for scenario two um, is going to be the equipment running time in hours, or the equipment actual running time in hours, divided by the downtime events, which have been unplanned, so the number of downtime events. Right, so let's go and build up a, a table here just to show that information. So we've got a filter on this page here for this P1000, just to keep it simple. And I'm going to go and just show the component parts of this. So the actual runtime is, it is here, coming actual runtime. So run for that number of hours. The downtime events was 13. And the mean time between failures is going to be 1,158. Okay, so that's going to be the, the first one. So that's fairly straightforward. Next, we're going to calculate the mean downtime. So we need the unplanned downtime. So let's go and calculate the unplanned downtime. So a fairly, a fairly straightforward calculation here. We're going to so we're going to use some x and we're going to sum across the table, which is basically this availability data filtered for the availability reason code, which is unplanned. And for all of those unplanned um, records, we're going to sum up the unavailable hours. Okay, so that's going to give us the number of unplanned downtime or the unplanned downtime hours. We've already got the number of unplanned downtime events, so we can now go on and create the mean downtime. Okay, so the mean downtime is the equipment unplanned downtime hours divided by the number of unplanned events. Uh, we'll just pull that into here as well, so we can see that getting um, getting pulled together. Unplanned downtime hours. Um, we've got the unplanned downtime events. And then we've got the mean downtime. So if we just move that out a bit, we can see that it's 21.88 hours. Okay, so that is a fairly straightforward set of calculations to calculate for the scenario to the mean time between failures and the mean downtime. Okay, so now we're going to move on and do the availability calculations. So let's have a look at this. Available um, actual running hours, we've got that. And then we need the actual running hours plus the planned downtime plus the unplanned downtime. So we've got the unplanned downtime here. So we need a planned downtime. So this is just going to be a copy of this but for the unplanned, or for the planned reason, uh, unavailability reason code equals to planned. Okay, so that's that measure added in there. So let's go and calculate the availability. So the availability is going to be the equipment actual running hours divided by the equipment actual running hours, or running time in hours, plus the equipment um, unplanned downtime and we also need to add in plus the equipment plan downtime. And let's add that in. Okay, so this one was 92%. And then finally, we're going to calculate the technical availability. So that is going to be the availability, I'll put tech. So that's going to be the equipment actual runtime plus the planned downtime. So we need to put this in brackets. Divided by the equipment, uh, what have we got here? Actual runtime plus, yeah. So equipment actual runtime plus equipment unplanned downtime plus equipment planned downtime. And we'll pull that into there. And that's 98%. As we'd expect, because we have um, only taken into account the unplanned downtime. Right, so that, um, in the end, quite straightforward to actually build the calculations. Nothing really complicated there. Most of the video is really talking about the setup and understanding the um, the scenario. But hopefully that was time well spent so that you can use this to build your own availability and reliability calculations for this particular type of scenario where you've got a duty and a standby machine. So if you found this useful, it's always appreciated if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you want to keep up to date with the latest videos, then hit the subscribe button and you'll get a notification whenever I release a new video, which is more or less every week. Thanks again for listening and I'll talk to you in the next video.